Welcome back to my channel. I am your favorite mother of three bougie vintage, or maybe I'm not. And today's video is another B with the T. I feel like I haven't done a B with the T in like a few weeks, you know, so I'm here to bring it back. Let me get this out of the way because I gotta do my makeup. There's a few things I wanna lend my opinion on, so we're just gonna do a little quick get ready with me. You know, keep the makeup real simple today and talk to you guys about what's been going on on social media, darling. So, it is Sunday. I never film on Sundays, but I decided I would get ahead of Vlogmas and film my B with the T today so that I could focus my energy elsewhere starting tomorrow. And so, that's why I sat before you today on a Sunday, girl. I never, when I say never, girl, I don't do the weekend. Okay, I do not film on the weekend, but I decided that that's something that I was willing to do today because with Vlogmas coming up, honestly, I'm highly stressed. <laughs> I have a video for every day of December, okay? Not just until Christmas, but literally every day of December. And a video for my main channel and also content for my bougiest members that have exclusives. So, we're gonna be busy, okay? Very busy come Vlogmas or come December. I need a mirror. Sat here to do my makeup and I forgot also my sponge is dry because I woke up at six, no, very early this morning. Very, very early this morning and I'm like, you know what? Let me film before everybody's up. Get it out the way. So I didn't have to like disrupt my mom today. But as soon as I walked out of my room and came over here, I see Nola circling in her room trying to find a toy to bring to my room. <laughs> And she saw me in the hallway and it was a wrap. So I just did my eyebrows and then it's like after 11 now. So I'll be right back. I'm going to um, wet this again. A few things happened this weekend or over the last few weeks and I haven't said a, a word because I've been preoccupied, but I'm back today. And one of the first things I wanna to talk to you about is JT and Uzi. Now, I don't know why people in general, like while they're in a relationship, why they sub their boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever on the internet. <laughs> I don't understand why they do that, okay? Because obviously, you know, I've had my fair share of posting things when I get mad enough, but I don't think I've ever posted and said I'm single when I know damn well I'm still with my boyfriend. <laughs> crazy to me. And so JT did this the other day. First thing that happened was Uzi had like posted that it's so nice to like come home to like nobody, like it's quiet, like he loves being at home in the quiet. And of course he then had to later post, he must've gotten in trouble from JT, so he came back later and clarified what he was trying to say. He just meant that his house is quiet or whatever, like you know. And then a couple days later, JT posts and JT's like, she's single. So then obviously her and Uzi didn't break up, so she she then has to come online again and clarify that she's one, gonna take us out of the group chat. <laughs> But that was a lie. She did not remove us from the group chat. She still has us up in there. She said she wasn't gonna post about it anymore or do anything like that again. And then a couple days later, she posted again. It's like, do you need attention, ma'am? Like, what is going on here? What is going on? So she tweets again and she says, I don't care like what I told you guys. That's my nigga for life. And it's just like, okay, well, nobody is arguing with you, JT. You are literally tweeting to a bunch of nobodies. Like, nobodies. We are nobodies. So I'm not sure why JT keeps getting on Twitter and doing this, but she also had stated that when she tweeted that she was single, she was actually really upset about something very petty. So everybody in the comments was saying that she like, that Uzi probably went out to eat without her and she was mad. Typical girlfriend stuff. But like, you don't tweet that you're single. Like, to me, that's highly problematic behavior. <laughs> And childish, like she's too old to be doing that. Am I the only one that thinks that? Like she's way too old to be tweeting that she's single when she's just mad because of something petty, you know? Especially when she knows that all eyes are already on them. Like absolutely not. Anyway, I feel like we've normalized toxic relationship behavior and that's why JT does stuff like that because we've normalized stuff like that. But I really don't think it's normal to do that when you're in a relationship with somebody. That being said, they're clearly still together, so God bless them. But moving on to what we assume is a healthy couple, Janae Aiko, is it Aiko? Janae and Big Sean welcome their baby into the world and oh my gosh, I'm so happy that they chose a normal name. <laughs> Not like a little brand, like, I mean, I get it. My kids' names are not like super duper normal either. Like I wanted my kids to have unique names, but also not 
too unique, you know? Like my kids are probably never gonna see their name on a cup at the Toys R Us, but that's fine. You know, we can we can personalize some tumblers for them. But realistically, they named their baby Noah and I think fatherhood looks so good on Big Sean. I think that Janae and Sean are like one of the hottest couples. Like they're just so attractive. Like two attractive people like that have no business being together. <laughs> Two attractive people like that. You need to be with somebody on the medium ugly side if you're super attractive. But like they're just giving us beauty upon beauty upon beauty. So I know that that baby must be gorgeous. And I mean, same goes for Rihanna and ASAP Rocky because ASAP is obviously very cute, you know, even though he's, <sighs> I know we don't like him guys. I know, I know, but he is handsome so him and rihanna making a baby together like oh my gosh that baby is probably so beautiful and we will probably never see it but god bless the baby and god bless noah but yeah noah is one of my favorite baby names so i'm i'm happy that they chose that name i think it's a powerful name and a really nice name and a normal name you know so janae is this is her second child and big sean's first child so i'm sure he's super excited to be now not just a stepdad but you know, an actual dad. Not to say the stepdads are not actual dads because there's some stepdads are out here doing more for the girls, for the boys than everybody else, okay? I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I never had a stepdad and I don't have a stepdad for my children. So I don't know about stepdads, but I know that I know people with great stepdads. So, you know, shout out to all the stepdads of the world. But yeah, fatherhood looks amazing on Big Sean. And I'm so happy that they had a healthy baby and brought the baby into the world. Songs complications. On the topic of babies, Snoop Dogg's baby, Corey. Okay, Snoop Dogg's daughter got engaged over the weekend. And when she first popped out with her man, there were naysayers, of course. People had a lot of opinions on what he might or might not be doing in terms of using her. Doesn't think that he really likes her because of what, I don't know. First of all, Corey is gorgeous. Like she's actually gorgeous, okay? With or without makeup, she's gorgeous. Now, obviously she is plus size. So I feel like a lot of the stuff that's coming that people are saying is because she's one plus size and two dark skin, which is crazy. Because if you look at the comments under the post, a lot of the comments are just alleging that there's negative comments. But if you actually scroll, you don't see any of the negative comments. All you see is, what is everybody in the comments talking about? No, I feel like the people that are commenting that are looking for brownie points, number one. But number two, they're making up that they even saw negative comments to begin with, because I really didn't see any. And one of the comments that I saw that had the most likes on it was, is it just me or is nobody else seeing these negative comments that everybody's talking about? <laughs> And I was like, girl, me too, because what are they talking about? There were literally no negative comments. It was pe people were getting their negative comments off by saying that the comments were negative. No, that's how you are feeling and that's why you're saying what you're saying. Trying to make it look like somebody else was saying something negative when that's really just you making it up. And I think that's a sickness, okay? You are sick. <laughs> Like, what is that? And then one of the comments that I saw that was on the negative side was, she said, hold on, let me, I screenshot it. No, no, I didn't screenshot it. It, it was a backhanded compliment. You, and I wouldn't even consider it that. Like, it was not even a compliment at all. But she said, if she can find love, I should be able to too. Girl, what? What does that even mean? And so somebody got her together real quick <laughs> in the comment section and they said to her, well, all you post is thirst trap. So all you're gonna attract is thirsty man. And that's one period. But like, I couldn't believe that people were in the comments saying that there's a bunch of negative comments and there really wasn't, like there really wasn't. And to me, she's beautiful, her man is handsome. Like they should just go and live their best life and stay off of social media because people are always gonna have something to say about their relationship. Because I think really what it is is the fact that he's light skin and or brown skin and she's dark skin and heavier. And I feel like people are just projecting. I feel like they are really just saying how they really Really feel by using the excuse to comment that other people are saying negative things when they're not and that don't make no type of sense like just say what you want to say and say it with your chest okay and stop trying to make stuff up that's not there but yeah I think Corey's always been beautiful she's very talented she has a voice on her girl so shout out to Corey and her man I don't even know her man's name so he can't be an opportunist girl because I don't know he didn't come up off of her <laughs> He did not come up, her, come up off of her. And that's what they're saying. They're saying that's the only reason he's with her because she's Snoop Dogg's daughter. Like, 
What? So as Snoop Dogg's daughter, is she just never supposed to date because somebody's always gonna just date her because she's Snoop Dogg's daughter? Like, girl, bye. I think they're really just mad because she's getting proposed to and they're still with their man for however many years and not getting proposed to. Cause there's just no reason for anybody to have an opinion, a negative one on her relationship. She don't be bothering nobody. Like what? What? Anyway, moving right along to the next couple that I must discuss because as Thanksgiving approached, our favorite funny couple K Diggs and April Jones. Yes, favorite funny couple. Yes, that's what I said and I meant it. <laughs> I actually genuinely love them together. I think that they are so funny. I love their content that they put out. They look like they're having a good old time, okay? But the reason that I brought them up today is because over Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, of course. P.S. Sound off in the comments below if you are inviting me to your house next year for American Thanksgiving, okay? I will make sure I have my paperwork right and my passport in order, girl, because I need to experience at least one American Thanksgiving before the world ends. Okay, I need, I need to. And how else am I going to experience it without one of you guys inviting me over? So far, I've been invited to South Carolina, Memphis, New York. I was invited to Baltimore. I think I was invited to Philly. Girl, I was giving bougie world tour 2023, girl. <laughs> Please schedule me in, but I gotta make it to all of them. So y'all gonna have to have over like a span of a week now. Okay, and I don't want leftovers, but that's neither here nor there. April Jones and Tay Diggs are a couple. And like I said, I thoroughly enjoy their content. But during Thanksgiving, there was a video of them and April's daughter, and April's daughter was sitting on Tay's lap. Now, April is not married to this person, and even if she was, I think I would still raise an eyebrow because I have three daughters and I don't care who the hell I'm dating, my daughters are not sitting on their lap. And that's on period. I don't like it. I don't think little girls should sit on grown men's laps that are not their dad. Like, absolutely not. I think it's just not okay. And I really wanna know if Omarion pressed the issue because why do you have my daughter sitting on some other man's lap? And so the comments were mixed. You know, some people were agreeing with the fact that she shouldn't be on Tay's lap and other people were like, mind your business, it's not your kid. But I just feel like everybody should have the same standard where kids are concerned, whether it's your kid or not. <laughs> Nobody should be sitting, and that goes for little boys too. Little boys shouldn't be sitting on anybody's lap either. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, no. So. I, I really do wonder if Omarion pressed the issue with April and hopefully we don't see it again. What if they break up tomorrow? It was the same thing we had a problem with, with um, North and Pete Davidson and Kim and Pete ended up breaking up after all that public PDA bull and North being on his lap in the golf cart or whatever, like blah, blah, blah. People be bringing their kids around their man way too soon. Like absolutely not. Absolutely freaking lootly not <laughs> it's just not a thing not a thing and you know to each their own but like protecting your kid should be your number one priority and that's nothing even it's not nothing against tay right like i don't know this man you know it's just like a standard that needs to be set but yeah what do you guys think about that and if you have kids do you let them sit on anybody's Lap. And so, as we continue to breeze through our list here, I would like to turn your attention to the one and only Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze was recently fighting with some guy that was allegedly her boyfriend about the fact that she was pregnant. And this was a big freaking ordeal because he tried, he got on like TikTok and debunked <laughs> the fact that she was pregnant because Apparently she was holding a pregnancy test that was called, uh, that you could order off of Amazon that is like a prank test. It's two names put together. So like there's clear blue and then there's, um, what are the pregnancy tests? Girl, I, I, I should know them all. <laughs> clear blue and first choice, I think, or first response. And this one was called clear response or something like that. Yeah, clear response, something like that. So it's a fake pregnancy test that shows positive from Amazon. It's like if you wanna do a pregnancy prank, which is stupid on your whoever, your mama, your spouse, whoever. And so he was pretty much debunking the fact that she was pregnant and they were going at it online for a couple days, a few weeks ago. So now in Johnny Blaze's comment section, she is telling her fans or whoever's commenting on her pictures Again, weird behavior that she is no longer pregnant. She had an abortion. Girl, girl, really? <laughs> really? Now, I don't know if this lady was pregnant or not. And at this point, I don't give a damn. But I feel like it adds validity to 
what he was saying. Now, the reason that they were even arguing online was because she was accusing him of being abusive and threatening her. And so he was displaying problematic behavior anyway. Baby, that baby would have been sent back to Jesus real quick, okay? Because that's just, oh, I don't put too much. Because that's just too much. Like, I'm telling you I'm pregnant and you're telling me, you swear to God, that if I'm pregnant, <laughs> you're gonna do what to me? What? Or he said, or or was it, I think, he, actually, I think it was, he was telling her if he finds out she's lying about it. Because he was trying to say, like, she is crazy and, like, she's, Try making it up to one, make him look bad, but also to um, have a reason to like stay connected with him, which we've seen before, you know, not with her, like in general, we've seen people do crazy stuff like that before, but that's pretty much what their whole feud online was about. But now she is in her comment section, answering people's questions and stating that she had an abortion. And then kind of like in a way playing like the victim card where she's saying she was damned if she does and damned if she didn't. And if she speaks up about it, they tell her to shut up. If she doesn't say anything, then she's lying or blah, 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 blah. And I don't know, girl. It's tired. It's tired. But that's why you don't go on social media when you're eight weeks pregnant. Not even eight weeks, actually. I think she, I think, I think that was a part of the, uh, the uh, another part of the issue. The time, um, how far along she was claiming she was at the time that she was claiming she was pregnant. I think that was part of the issue. So keep in mind, uh, like an uh, at-home pregnancy test is not going to detect the hormone until you're at least four weeks. So, and sometimes even then it doesn't, you have to go to the doctor because it's not picking up. So sometimes it's eight weeks, but like, that was a part of the issue. Either which way, she didn't make a post to, after all the drama she started online, she did not make an, a follow-up post to say, hey guys, I'm gonna get an abortion. Not that she needs to, but at the same time, is if you're gonna start it online, girl, <laughs> keep us updated. Keep us the frig updated. Don't try to sneak away and have your abortion if you had an abortion after you caused a whole ruckus online about it. Like, was it for attention? And the craziest part about Johnny is she's disgustingly talented, okay? Like, disgustingly. And I don't say that about a lot of people, but she wasted or has wasted a lot of her talent partially because of love and hip hop, but also, you know, drama in general. So we, we don't see the, the talent. We don't really recognize Johnny for her writing capabilities or her piano playing. Like so many of these new artists out here, they don't even know how to play an instrument, right? Like even when Beyonce first started, she didn't know how to play an instrument, but Prince told her, if you really wanna be a musician, then pick up something else. Like don't just be a vocalist list you know and she did and that's why Beyonce decided to learn to play the piano maybe you didn't know that and I just gave you free information <laughs> but it's a true story the fact of the matter is she's extremely talented and it's unfortunate that her drama outshines her talent nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten now on the topic of drama outshining the talent, let's look at Saweetie because recently it was discovered that she was only going to sell 2K in her first week. <sighs> I will advocate for Saweetie every day of my life <laughs> that she needs to become a YouTuber, okay? Let me tell you something. She will give all of us, me included, she will give all of the YouTube girlies a run for our money, period. Saweetie, she needs to tap it, girl, not even tap in, girl, sorry, I'm not, I didn't even do that to be funny. She needs to tap in to her full potential because she sat over here trying to be a rapper so bad. I get it. She loves music. She loves the craft. But baby, it's not giving that for her. It's not. You don't see me over here trying to be no singer, okay? Because I know that's not where my talent lies. I might be able to hold a tune or, or two, but three and four, I don't think so. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go over here and try to be a singer all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Like even if that's my dream, okay? Cause the best vocal coaches in the world couldn't help me. <laughs> they just couldn't, okay? But like, Saweetie needs to stop playing games and realize that yes, she came into the music industry with Icy Girl or whatever, you know, and she got a little bit of a buzz and a following, but she needs to recognize that most of her buzz and following is not because she's a great artist 
or great lyricist. A lot of her problem is her delivery, which is why I must say her last song that she put out that is causing all this controversy, <laughs> She, you could tell she'd been working on the delivery cause it don't sound too, too bad, but it's still not all the way there. So I respect Saweetie for, you know, putting her best foot forward and like trying to come harder with her delivery and the bars and all that. However, she needs to retire rap and either venture into pop because Back to the Streets is a hit and a bop and a hit and a bop. Okay, she needs to do pop, but she also needs to go and be a YouTube personality. She has the looks. That's why people love Saweetie, that she's beautiful. She has the looks, she has the the personality, she's funny, she, she loves food. Saweetie cooking channel, 10 million subscribers day one, okay? If she don't hire me and put me on her team, girl, cause I will run her YouTube channel for her, okay? Okay, I just want 10%. <laughs> I'll stop my channel and just let her do hers, girl. Sweetie, hire me, girl, because at this point, you need to be a YouTuber and you will thank me later, ma'am, okay? not I'm not even joking. Like, she needs to do something else. I'm sorry. And the 2K uh, sales is whatever because I looked up her monthly streaming and it's pretty high. Like she has a high streaming rate and we were in the Bougie Village meeting uh, yesterday and we were talking about this and Chris mentioned the fact that a few years ago, Nicki Minaj was fighting for them to count streams because most of us are not buying music anymore. We're simply streaming it. The only time I buy music now is if I wanna use the music in like, content so i'll buy maybe a single or one of the songs off of the album to use it on instagram and there's ways around that so but like if you don't own the music like in your library a lot of the times like your computer won't bring it into um like premiere pro which is what i edit with so you kind of are forced to buy but most people these days are not purchasing music because of streaming platforms. Why did they make the streaming platforms and then still expect the artist to be selling? However, her team is sabotaging her. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And somebody's gonna have to pay back the money, girl. But because Saweetie has all the endorsements she has, she has Crocs, she had the Saweetie meal at, what was it, McDonald's? Yeah, she had McDonald's. We, she has, I think, Xbox or something like that. Like, so we need to be getting to the bag, okay? But she needs to, I think she would do even better and have even more endorsements if she had a YouTube channel. So it's not to discourage her, you know? It, it, of course it's gonna suck if you're constantly hearing that people don't wanna hear your music. <laughs> I'm sorry. If people don't wanna hear your music, I get it, you know? But like, sometimes you have to listen to what the people are saying. Cause if they're telling you, girl, we don't want this, okay? Happens to the best of us, girl. I be uploading content and y'all will let me know if you don't want uh, that type of content, you know? So it's the same thing. You have to kind of listen to what the people want and give them what they want or, you know, but um, she's another person that, we're starting to see more drama than talent from her simply because the last song she dropped, she dropped it right after Takeoff died. As we all know, Takeoff and Quavo are nephew and um, uncle or uncle and nephew. And she was dating Quavo and they had a messy breakup. So her releasing the song when she did, a lot of people had mixed opinions on it. One thing I will say is that I saw a clip of Saweetie performing that song long before Takeoff passed away. So the song wasn't necessarily out and readily available for streaming or downloading or anything like that, but it, it did exist. She didn't make it after he died because that's kind of crazy, right? But the song did exist prior to Takeoff passing away. However, I feel like her team is probably behind it coming out when it did or pushing it out when it did. I don't feel like she was necessarily comfortable with it because I think it's cold for her team to cap try to capitalize off of that. Like the fact that his, the Migos names are in the media because somebody passed away that really changed hip hop, you know, and her affiliation with them or with one of the members. I think it's a little, strange, but Saweetie is not an independent artist. So there's chances are that she is pretty much being forced to release when she is, or maybe she wanted to release it at this time. I don't know. I think that would be cold. However, like I said, I can vouch for the fact that I saw her perform the song in the summertime 
and it went viral on Twitter. And I think it actually circulated on Twitter more than once. So with that information, I, I don't feel that it is necessarily a slight towards them, but it still looks bad. So we have to call a spade a spade. It looks bad. If I were Saweetie, I probably would not have done it. Like I wouldn't have released it, but like no matter when she released it, people were gonna say, oh my God, Takeoff just died. So you can't put that out. Like people were always gonna say that no matter, it could be a year down the line, they're still gonna say it. Because at the end of the day, if you've ever grieved before, you kind of know that it's not a, a thing where you're gonna just stop grieving at any given point. Like you, you pretty much end up, depending on how close you were to the person, you grieve for, for life. Like you grieve for life and it doesn't necessarily get easier but every day is not gonna be, you know, boo-hooing. So I understand why there was so much uproar about her releasing it, but at the same time, what's she gonna do? Keep it in the archives forever? No matter, she, she at that, for her situation, she's definitely damned if she did and damned if she didn't, for sure. Like there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, she was damned if she did and damned if she didn't. At the end of the day, um, it's unfortunate that Takeoff passed away, but like Saweetie, cannot stop her life because Takeoff passed away. And Saweetie was very quiet when everything was first going on. If you guys remember like his um, Quavo's sister was online, Quavo was online, everybody's taking shots at Saweetie, Lil Baby was online. However, Lil Baby, the Lil Baby and Saweetie drama <laughs> is ridiculous. Um, and Lil Baby's still denying the fact that that was even him in the picture, even though we clearly know. And now that Jada has kind of spoken up about it or delivered the corny emoji, I guess, like I said, we're back to paying attention to drama that involves Sweetie versus talent, you know? I don't think people understand how important it is to study Beyonce. <laughs> When you are heading into the music industry, I think there should be a study Beyonce course because no one, no one knows how to do media like Beyonce knows how to do media. And by do media, I mean ignore everything, okay? She does not address anything. <laughs> and if she does address it, it usually goes into the music. Very rarely does she respond on Twitter. She, she does not use Twitter to respond to people. She doesn't. Men and women alike need to be taking the Beyonce specialty course. <laughs> like literally. Even better, Beyonce needs to be hosting a media training course for the people. Whoever her publicist is, is amazing. Like amazing. So I'm not surprised that Saweetie's only doing 2K sales, but like nobody has been able to really sell records these days. It's just not a thing anymore. People are streaming and they need to adjust the bar in the music industry to allow streams and stop counting 2K pure sales or 2K sales or 10K, 31, whatever the other girls are getting. Like ignore it or and stop it completely because I I was telling bougie village members as well I the last album I think I bought was art pop by Lady Gaga beyond uh well I bought renaissance but that's because I bought merch right so it came with it um if it was just the merch wait a damn minute on the topic of merch where is Beyonce now I didn't mailed up my, my merch okay so I, I held myself accountable and I got everybody their merch where is my merch, Beyonce? Where's my merch? Jalen told me Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving came and passed and I have not received not a shipping notification, nothing. I'm about to sue. Anyway, Beyonce's not gonna address me. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, 2K sales, whatever the sales are, who cares? At the end of the day, I haven't purchased an album since Art Pop by Lady Gaga, Beyonce, which came out in the same year. Um, Oh no, pink print. I did buy pink print, but again, I bought pink print with merch. So I don't know. I don't be buying a, a lot of albums. I don't know. I, I might have bought Planet Her, but I'm not sure. I have it downloaded, but I don't know if I bought it. I think I purchased a song or two off of there. I don't know. Yeah, like I don't see any purchased albums on here. I'm sorry. So back to the music topic because there's a few other things I want to talk about before I get up out of here. And one of those things is that Meek Mill and Rick Ross perform together. This is crazy because we haven't seen them together in a long damn time. They had some 
label issues, probably some money issues, and looks like they either squashed that beef and resolved it or settled it somehow. Maybe it was Jay-Z, maybe it was Drake. <laughs> Somebody ended the feud and they performed together like nothing ever happened. So that's good for them. We love a good squashed beef in hip hop, that's for sure. Maybe, maybe just one day we will see that between our fave girlies, okay? I'm not gonna say any names now. <laughs> you know who they are. Bitch, no. You know who they are. I feel like we see a pattern there where the men are concerned. They always seem to be able to move on, even if it takes a long time, girl. They always seem to be squashing their beefs and continuing to get to the bread and the bag because I feel like there's so much money out there for them to make if they would just squash beef, but nobody wants to do that apparently, so. Moving right along, before I head into the main event, I just wanna to touch quickly on the fact that Jay Holiday performed at the Soul Train Awards. First of all, 2007 me was screaming. <laughs> why did I, why was I singing these songs and loving these songs at uh, the, in 2007 as a child, I don't know. But I feel like Jay Holiday has not gotten his flowers and he definitely needs them. I would be open to new music from Jay Holiday, so hopefully he does, you know, come out with some new music. This lipstick is everything. I forgot about this color, girl. Mm -hmm. It's that Fenty Beauty Thick. Ooh. Jay Holiday performed and his voice was sounding immaculate. It was sounding beautiful on that mic. I'm definitely hoping to hear some new music from him. Now, who I'm not looking forward to hearing new music from or new anything from is the one and only Kanye West. However, I'm not really here to talk about Kanye. I'm here to talk about Balenciaga, okay? Now, if you guys are living under a rock, then you have no idea about this Balenciaga scandal, but it is a scandal, okay? and a, a, tr a troublesome, troublesome one at that. And quite frankly, I'm disgusted for a number of reasons. One of which Kanye actually highlighted, which was that no celebrities have spoken out against Balenciaga. And why is that? Is it because, oh hell no, what is this? <laughs> what is this? When did that come out? Is, that's one thing I don't like about wearing certain earrings with this hair, it snags so much. One of the reasons they're possibly not speaking out is because anytime the people try to come together to cancel a brand for, I don't know, racism, it doesn't pan out, you know? It's happened with Gucci, it's happened with Prada, it's happened with a whole bunch of brands and they've never been successfully canceled for a number of reasons, they, they try to, make their comebacks and most of them have successfully done so. I think the only one that we've seen that has not really made a super comeback was H&M. <laughs> H&M was like, well, if you buy it, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. Like, you know, that whole monkey debacle thing that happened a few years ago. So when brands tend to get canceled, sometimes celebrities speak out. Like T.I. at that at one point was advocating against boycotting certain brands and I think even burned was, or was that 50? Well, T.I. did it. I recall 50 um, piling up all his stuff. And it was just ridiculous. It was actually crazy when it happened. And so um, fast forward to now, nobody's saying anything. I personally have never purchased Balenciaga. Oh, I lied. There was one item that used to be in my house that is no longer with us, rest in peace. <laughs> Um, from Balenciaga, but that left with somebody else. So that was the only Balenciaga item that was ever in my house. I don't own a pair of shoes, not a purse, nothing. Okay, they almost got me with the uh, bucket bag, girl, but I never bought it. So I'm Balenciaga free. But most of the people in the industry love Balenciaga. They wear it all the time and they're probably not gonna stop wearing it, which is why they're not speaking out against the situation. Now, the situation, if you are unfamiliar with it, it involved a marketing campaign that was highly problematic and disturbing because it was like BDSM and children. What is going on? So if you do eat any research and you um, Google the photographer that did the campaign shoot, well, that's very telling. Weird stuff is going on. But Kanye made a statement and he said, let me read this real quick. Kanye said, they tried to destroy me in press. 
we don't care about the stuff that he's saying about himself. So we're just gonna pretend like he didn't even say them. We're just gonna stick to the points here. They tried to destroy all of my businesses at the same time and the world saw it. And no one is saying anything. You know, as far as like none of the celebrities. So this just shows you all celebrities are controlled. You don't see no celebrities talking about the Balenciaga situation. Right, so that just shows you all of these celebrities out here. Don't let them influence you in any way because they're controlled by the people who really influence the world. There's no such thing as a celebrity influencer. Ooh. And then Shaq, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal commented and said, the same brand that dropped his dumb ass. Hashtag narcissist, hashtag hypocrite. Two things can be true, Shaquille, okay? So yes, they did have a falling out. But as you recall, Kanye was advocating for the fact that his children would not model or be parts of anything related to these brands and yada, 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 yada. I think they were only supposed to do Yeezy and maybe not even Yeezy, but obviously Kanye knew something that we didn't know. And then now this is happening and it's really disturbing because literally no one has said anything. Kim Kardashian is one of the faces of Balenciaga. She's a model on their website. She still has ties with them, I believe. So the fact that she's not saying anything and she has four children, thank God they weren't in the shoot, but I wonder why. Like who approved this? And then Balenciaga is not even taking accountability. They're acting like they didn't know that this was gonna be the shoot. Before it went public, you guys had to approve it. Who is running the website, okay? Like if something is uploaded on my channel, baby, I have to approve it before it gets uploaded. Allegedly. So you're if, if, if a company as big as Balenciaga is not approving stuff before it goes public is crazy. It's not believable and it's it's very irresponsible. So I agree with Kanye here where he's saying no celebrities are speaking out again about it because as we know, celebrities or Holly weird has been traumatizing children for a very long time. So, and they have no, they're not gonna stop anytime soon. So I, we're not surprised that nobody's speaking out about the stuff. Like look how many people are involved in the uh, Jeffrey Epstein situation. Look how many weird celebrities were on his island and in his jets and doing all these things and they don't even know where this man's getting his money from, okay? What we do know is that there was a whole lot of children involved or underage people. So at the end of the day, Kanye is not wrong when he says this. A lot of the time when Kanye talks, he isn't wrong, but his delivery is off or something. And then sometimes it's just straight up ignorant, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking specifically about this Balenciaga thing because it's a mess, okay? And I will not purchase Balenciaga. I will not, um, well, that's all I can do, girl, not purchase Balenciaga. <laughs> so they won't be getting any of my Christmas coins. But if you wanna see what I got myself for Christmas, cause baby, she spoilt herself, okay? You will see that during Vlogmas and you will see everything I got for my kids and what I got for the, my family. Super excited about that. But that's neither here nor there. This is Bubby with the T, okay? And so in my personal opinion, I definitely feel like the Balenciaga stocks need to be taking a hit at this point. I feel like celebrities should be speaking up because most celebrities have kids or nieces and nephews, something, okay? I want somebody to speak to why this campaign was okay and why Balenciaga has taken zero accountability for it and are trying to put it off on the creative director of the shoot. Like, girl, please. <laughs> please, where's the creative director of the entire company? Forget the shoot, girl. Somebody had to have approved this. So y'all thought it was cute. Y'all thought nobody was gonna bat an eye or did you guys do it so that there would be controversy around the brand because controversy sells and yada, yada, yada. Because to be honest, a lot of the Balenciaga designs are a mess, okay? And that's coming from somebody with a design background. A mess. So, I'm not surprised that this is happening. You know, if it's not one brand, it's gonna be another. Every year, they sprinkle in a designer brand issue you know every year they do this like th this is not new every year we have a design scandal okay so i'm not surprised now that being said it's been a tough year for the fashion world okay we've lost greats fashion world has definitely taken a hit this year but like i'm not i'm i'm not i don't care about balenciaga i really don't okay and so if you are watching this video and you own any Balenciaga, are you gonna continue wearing Balenciaga? Are you gonna continue purchasing Balenciaga? Or are you going to donate your Balenciaga stuff? Or are you going to continue to wear your Balenciaga stuff but not 
purchase anymore? Are you boycotting? Like, what's what's good here? Um, I feel like this one definitely needs to be boycott. Okay, definitely. Now that is pretty much it for this episode of Be with the T. I love you all so much, and I will definitely see you in the next one. And this is probably the last time you're gonna see this hair, so. Say goodbye. We had a good run. I did it myself. You know, it took me forever, but it got done. And now I'm ready to take it out because my head is super itchy and like, I can't deal anymore. Anyway, I love you all so much. I'll definitely see you in the next one. Oh, nail cam. First of all, do you, are your, do you guys have the, y'all ain't got this. Y'all ain't got these. You need to get you one of these. Okay, you, you don't have the spinners on your, what girl? These are my Christmas nails. So yeah, we got the snow, oh, let me not focus on my face. We got the snowflakes, some glitter action. We live, okay? So I've been wearing Christmas nails like for like the last few weeks, but yeah, um, more Christmas sets are coming. Anyway, I love you all so much. and I'll definitely see you in the next one. You're not get to the yams. Let me tell you something. I'm taking, I'm supposed to be taking my hair out right now. So I'm mad for a number of reasons. And if you hear a noise, it's because I have a space heater on in here because this room gets really cold. But I finished filming. I had to come back because after 50, 11 years, Kim Kardashian decided she's going to speak up where Balenciaga is concerned. And when I say speak up, she didn't say much of anything. Okay. So I'm going to read you what she said. I got the screenshots here. Video is already uploaded onto YouTube, okay? But I decided I would take it down and upload it with this part. Kim Kardashian said, I have been quiet for the past few days, not because I haven't been disgusted and outraged by the recent Balenciaga campaigns, but because I wanted an opportunity to speak to their team to understand for myself how this could have happened. Please note, she did not say what the hell they said at this meeting, okay? She didn't give us any explanation as to why, even though she's making this statement. And there is no explanation as to why. Let me just put that out there. As a mother of four, I have been shaken by the disturbing images. Has she really? The safety of children must be held with the highest regard and any attempts to normalize child abuse of any kind should have no place in our society. Period, she said. She thought she was a city girl. I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaigns and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will and will take the necessary measures for this to never happen again. Baloney, tomatoes, girl, go make me a sandwich. Cause what is this? What is this? She's pretty much saying without saying she's not severing ties with them. And we're not talking about a regular scandal. Okay, this is involving children. This is not any other campaign. And not to say that we need to look past racism. Racism is clearly a problem. However, this is highly problematic. And her pretty much collecting a bag still off of Balenciaga and agreeing to pretty much calm the people, allegedly, with this little not saying nothing, three little tweets. Is it three or four? Three tweets? It is asinine, ridiculous, irresponsable, disgusting, and y'all already know I'm not a supporter of the Kardashians, so the way I feel about this situation, um, the way I feel about the Kardashians, I'm not surprised by her response. I was not surprised by her response simply because my hair's a mess, girl. Can't be dragging people and I look crazy. Um, <laughs> simply because just based on like how long she took to actually say something, I already knew when she came through, it was gonna be a crock of you know what. Because when any other situation has happened, whether it be with her ex-husband or with Kyrie, I don't, did she speak out against Kyrie? Whatever. When it comes to any other situation, she's so quick to jump on her Instagram and state something. She's so quick to open her mouth about something, but this one that it actually will affect her own bag, she don't give a damn. And it's not like she needs the money. That's what makes this even more sick. Like she's already a billionaire. Even if she's not a billionaire, she has millions of dollars, enough money to last many, many moons and many, many lifetimes. Her kids are straight for life. Her family is straight for life. Great. The fact that they're not 
severing ties or she's not blatantly coming out and saying we're not going to separate ties with um, Belez Yaga is very telling. Um, at the end of the day, people are going to be about what's best for them. So I'm not surprised by her behavior or what she is putting out. I think because she has four kids, we definitely expected more from her, but not really. Like, I don't expect anything from anyone that cried about their sex tape being leaked when their mother was pimping them out, allegedly. Like, I, I don't expect anything from Kim. Like, I, she, she, my expectations for Kim are on the very low scale of expectations. At this point in my life, I'm not expecting things from anybody, okay? <laughs> People are disappointing. So this is very disappointing. She pretty much just came and gaslit the people because everybody was waiting for her to say something because she is the face of their brand. She's on their website, in their campaigns. You know, thank God her kids weren't a part of the damn campaign. But like the fact that Kanye said something and you know what? Maybe he wouldn't have said anything if he was still with them. Or maybe he would have based on the public's opinion. I don't know. We're never going to know at this point because they already dropped him. He's already, you know, done for where that's concerned. But Kimberly is still very much associated with the brand and... Um, I think it's disgusting. I'm shaken by Kimberly and I want my reparations. <laughs> so that's pretty much my take on it. What do you guys think? I love you all so much and I will definitely see you in the next one.